you, and you may be seated. Dr. Scott Floyd, and I am a senior fellow and director of counseling programs here at B.H. Carroll. On behalf of our faculty and administration, we welcome you to B.H. Carroll Theological Institute's 2022 Convocation and Graduation Ceremony. We're glad to celebrate with you this significant event in the life journey of each of our graduating students. We are especially grateful after three long years to be able to do this in person. We are, are um, glad to be here with you and to welcome those who are viewing our, our program online as well as those of you that are here in person. We have several people we would like to recognize this evening uh, that have contributed to the, the work that takes place here at BH Carroll. We would like to thank our Board of Governors who oversees the functioning of the institution. We would like to thank, thank our distinguished fellows, resident fellows, teaching fellows, supervisors, and administrative staff who guide our students in the educational endeavor. We would like to thank our B.H. Carroll alumni from literally around the world. We would like to thank family members of graduates, including spouses, children, parents, other family members who have supported, encouraged, and prayed for these students through their years of study. We would like to thank church members and other friends of graduates who, is, who have also walked alongside our graduates at, during their time here at B.H. Carroll. We would like to express our appreciation to several people this evening also. First of all, we would like to express our appreciation to First Baptist Church Grand Prairie and to Dr. Bill Scar, their pastor, for hosting not only our graduation this evening, but earlier this week, our doctoral colloquy. We are appreciative for, for their, their graciousness in hosting us and thankful for what they do for us to, to have our event this evening. We would also like to express our appreciation to the singing men of North Central Texas under the direction of Trent Blackley. This group has added a depth and richness to B.H. Carroll graduations for more than a decade and we're grateful to have them again this year. Accompanying the singing men this evening are uh, Reverend, or Dr. Ralph Manuel at the piano and Dr. Jerry Westencooler at the organ. 
The singing men will also be joined by the worship choir of First Baptist Church Grand Prairie under, under the direction of Joel Salazar. Amongst our faculty and administration on the stage this evening, we, rec we, we welcome Dr. Jim Dennison and Reverend Anthony Freeman, who will participate in our service. The Dennisons and the Freemans both have sons who will graduate with their PhD degrees during the ceremony this evening. We do need to mention one sad note this evening. Dr. Karen Bullock, who directs our PhD programs and leads our doctoral program council, was called to Amarillo where her mother passed away yesterday morning. We will miss her terribly this evening and we know how much she loved graduations. We know especially she loved to place hoods on those students who graduated from her program. And so there will be um, that hole this evening with her not being here. And we do know that you will be praying for her, the, the Odell family, and the Bullock family in the days to come. B.H. Carroll treats its convocation and graduation not just as, as a celebration of the efforts and accomplishments of the students, but also as a worship event where we remember God's work in the lives of these students over the last few years. Join us now as we do that. Let us celebrate and worship together. Would you stand with me, please, as we read God's word? Matthew 28, 16 through 20. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. May God bless the reading of his word. Would you remain standing, please, for the seminary hymn. Lord, your church on earth is seeking your renewal from above. Teach us all the art of speaking with the accent of your love. We would heed your great commission, go now into every place. Teach, baptize, fulfill my mission, serve with love and share my grace. The commission hymn, or the hymn that was commissioned for B.H. Carroll is in your order of worship. Please uh, join us as we sing together. Oh 
Would you pray with me, please? Let's take this moment in the very presence of the God of the universe and first give him thanks for the privilege of this gathering and all that it means to us and all that it signifies to his kingdom. Would you take this moment and thank the Father for this moment in all of eternity and its eternal significance. Now would you take a moment and pray specifically for those that are grieving, suffering in Ukraine and in other places of heartache and heartbreak and pray that the Great Commission, the good news of God's love, would be so clear, so powerful, that God would redeem even these crises to his glory. Would you take a moment and pray for Dr. Bullock, pray for her family, pray for their strength, their peace in these difficult days of heartache and celebration. Would you take a moment and pray God's greatest blessing on B.H. Carroll and Dr. Wilkes and all that lead it and ask God to guide this institution to his greatest glory as it continues to literally change the world with the good news of his love and educate this generation and those that are to come. Would you pray his blessing on this service, this gathering, Dr. Brown, and all that will be said and sung here? And then would you pray for these graduates? Would you ask God's blessing for them, their families, their service? Ask for God's hand, his providence, and that what they have learned, what they have experienced, will be used literally to advance his kingdom around the world. Father God, I join these prayers with such gratitude that we are together in this place to celebrate your goodness and your grace. In a world that is so very broken, Father, we're praying especially for those in Uvalde right now, for these families, for these that are grieving, for these that are, Father, facing and feeling pain that we cannot begin to imagine. And we pray that God, this suffering, this tragedy would remind us again of the urgency of what we are here to do. I pray, God, that this urgency would move us to an even greater level of commitment, to an even greater level of surrender and submission to your spirit, that you would use us and the gifts you've entrusted to us to take the good news of your love and your light into this dark world in all the Uvaldis where you would lead us. And now, Father, we pray your blessing on this gathering, on this celebration, on this commem commencement. May it indeed, Father, be the beginning, the commencing, of all that you will do through these graduates and through this university, through this institute to your glory, as we thank you now for all you've done and all you will do. And we make this our prayer in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen.
It's always my privilege to, uh, at this time, talk about the thanksgiving and blessings that the Lord has given us in the past year. If you have your uh, order of service there, your program, uh, if you'll turn to the very back, I want to highlight some of these. Uh, on the last page, just before the seal, uh, we do what we do because of who God has put alongside of us. And this last year, in memoriam... Uh, we lost three uh, brothers in Christ who were a significant part of B.H. Carroll. Fred Probst received the President's Award in 2018, uh, went to be with the Lord at age, uh, it was in his mid-90s, and uh, was a friend of Russell Dilday's and introduced, uh, Dr. Dilday introduced him to us and has been a good friend and was a great friend uh, that walked alongside of us. Uh, some of you, uh, my age and a little younger, I know Dr. Bert Domini, who uh, taught theology at Southwestern for so many years and came alongside of us early as a distinguished fellow and uh, uh, served with uh, those who started B.H. Carroll. And also Bob Campbell, uh, one of our distinguished fellows that even as he moved away from the area uh, would always uh, have students uh, know about us and walk alongside of us. So since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, uh, we run the race that is laid out in front of us. And so uh, we're grateful for those that God has uh, put in our midst. On the next page, um, if you'll turn actually through the Board of Governors and those uh, 
at the end of the uh, order of service, uh, because of B.H. Carroll's affiliation with uh, the Association of Biblical Higher Education, there is a honor society that uh, we have been participating in the last three years. It's a relatively new society, and uh, we have taken advantage of that. And we're able to, by the election of the faculty, to recognize a current um, graduate, and then those that have graduated at least 10 years uh, ago and have uh, exhibited intellectual uh, achievement, Christian character, and leadership uh, ability. And this year, actually both of these come from our counseling program. Uh, and by the way, the uh, Delta Epsilon Chi stands for the three words in uh, Romans 16.10, approved in Christ. And that is the essence of, of this recognition. So I'd like to call to the podium our uh, honor graduate, Katie uh, Pana, Panaagua. Paniagua. You know, Dr. Koto told me that meant bread and water, and I just can't get that out of my head, so I apologize. But Katie. certificate for you as well as a, uh, a recognition and we just want to say thank you for representing us so well and uh, may God bless you as you serve him. Okay? So. And then in 2012 uh, in our one of our PhD graduates uh, Dr. Dina Adams uh, received her PhD here, and uh, Dr. Adams, if you'll come and stand uh, here. Uh, she has become a specialist in brain injury and trauma. And matter of fact, this summer, and this is what we hope all of our graduates will do, is publishing a book called Christian and Faith-Based Counseling for Brain Injury, Technique for Survivors and Families. And uh, Dr. Adams, we are so proud of you, and we thank you. Not only represent us, but represent the Lord in what you do thank every day. You so, so, thank, thank you. you. So much. Yes. Across from that page, at the bottom of the uh, uh, next page, is scholarships and legacy gifts. As you know, B.H. Carroll is among. Uh, very few schools, actually, uh, we are about the third, a third of the cost of most ATS accredited schools, and that's possible because of the gifts of friends and families and foundations uh, that give so generously to us. And we have listed here those that most recently have been part of uh, God's provision for our uh, mission and that allows us to keep the tuition at the place where we are and to provide for unique programs uh, through our counseling program, through our Hispanic studies programs. Uh, in so many of these ways, God has made things available. And we're grateful for every one of these uh, foundations and scholarships that, are, that exist. And let me just say, if you would like to establish a scholarship in the name of a graduate or a loved one, or if you have a family foundation and you want to invest in global theological education, please let us know uh, because, again, we cannot do this without your help and your generous gifts. And speaking of that, uh, every year uh, I'm privileged to uh, give what we call the President's Award. And this award is uh, someone who has supported B.H. Carroll's mission with their time, their talent, and their treasures. And we hold them up, uh, not just to honor them, but as examples of people who we believe would inspire and encourage others to serve the Lord with their lives. And this year, we want to recognize uh, Miss Carol Fry Ray and her friend, Pam, uh, if you'll come on up.
Carol, I'm going to read a little bit of this, okay? okay? Was born and raised in the cotton fields of West Texas, which all the good people have <laughs> come from there. Her parents gave her a wonderfully happy childhood. Her love for Christ and parenting her son, Dr. William Cook, have always been the most important focus of her lifetime. When she married Cecil Ray, she gained a daughter and a new church home at Broadway Baptist Church in Fort Worth and has been a faithful member there since 1956. Uh, and then for the past 10 years at the uh, state and residence, she has been part of Dr. Bruce Corley's Sunday school class. And every time I am there on a Sunday morning and other times that we had, uh, Carol is there uh, cheering B.H. Carol on and uh, uh, serving the Lord in this way. So I, I want to thank you today. And uh, by the way, I have to mention you have five grandkids, right? Yes. Yes, and that's the most important part. Uh, but this year's uh, President's Award goes to Carol Fry Ray as an example of the kind of people that God raises up and uses to further his mission. So thank you so, thank much. You so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mentioned earlier that uh, it is impossible uh, to do what we do without those who have gone before us. And uh, and I'm doing what I'm doing because a group of men uh, believed in me when I didn't know uh, I could do such things. And this year, uh, there were four of them. You know who they are, the, the legends <laughs> of V.H. Carroll, uh, Dr. Bruce Corley, Dr. Jim Spivey, Dr. Bud Smith, and Dr. Stan Moore. And these men heard the voice of God and they left Ur of the Chaldeans, <laughs> and uh, took off into the wilderness. And uh, we are here today, and it'll be 20 years in January of 24 uh, that they said yes to the Lord. And this year, uh, the last of the four are retiring, and that's Stan Moore. And so Stan, if you'll As you know, Stan, uh, my heartbeat is servant leadership. And uh, you exemplify that for me. Because like your uh, three other horsemen, <laughs> y'all uh, do whatever it takes. And you have done whatever it took. Uh, I knew nothing of theological education administration and uh, along with your friends and founders you said I'm here for you and I'm here for this mission mainly the mission but you have always uh, been there for me you've always been here for the school and we are where we are today because of your love your uh, heart for the Lord and for these students so this small plaque just simply says, Divine Servant, I've set for you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Dr. J. Stanley Moore, B.H. Carroll Theological Institute, 2004 to 2022. Thank you, brother. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You don't get a picture, it didn't happen. Well, that caught me by surprise. Um, it's been quite a ride, Bruce, hasn't it? It has. Little did we know in 2003 um, what kind of journey God would have us on. 
I won't bore you with all the details, but they were pretty exciting. What's exciting about the journey is not the four of us. It's the one great God who uh, put his hand on four men who didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> we knew a lot about theological education, but we didn't know where it was to be, and he gave us a new vision for theological education. And you're part of the fruit of that. That's why this night's so special to me. Uh, to see what God has done, what God will do in and through you. But the only one who deserves all the glory, of course, is Christ Jesus, our Lord. And so thank you, Gene, for your kind words. And uh, go get them. And by the way, is Mary here? Where is Mary? Very good. Mary, stand up. We know that you're the strength behind all this. So thank you. Very good. So this evening, we're privileged and honored to have uh, Dr. Elijah Brown as our speaker. Uh, here in a few moments, we'll have a prayer by one of our governors, David Strawn, and then another inspiring word from the singing men of Texas, and then uh, Dr. Elijah Brown will come and be with us. Elijah came to uh, be the leader at the Baptist World Alliance, the general secretary in 2018. Uh, he has been involved since 2005. Uh, he's served the global Baptist community in various ways more than a decade before joining the staff. Uh, he's done several aspects, very many parts of uh, being part of the Baptist World Alliance. Uh, one of those being that is dear to me is serving on the Commission on Theological Education and also uh, the Vice Chair of the Commission on Religious Liberty. And in 2007, the uh, Baptist World Alliance named him one of the 35 global emerging leaders. He was previously uh, executive vice president of 21 Wilberforce, a Christian human rights organization uh, with Randall Everett, and uh, also was an associate professor of religion at East Texas Baptist. So he, he brings to us academics as well as experience. Uh, he is the son of Pastor Pat Brown in Dallas and he was ordained in the ministry in 2002. He received his bachelor's degree from the University of Mary Hardin Baylor in Texas and a double major in religion and history. And then received his PhD in divinity with a focus on world Christianity from the University of Edinburgh in Scotland. Uh, he submitted reports to the United Nations, the US Department of State, the US Commission on International Religious Freedom as well as numerous foundations and groups. He's married to Amy and has three wonderful kiddos. And he has literally two days ago uh, gotten off the plane from Moscow, Russia, where he was able to interact with religious and political leaders uh, in that arena. God is using him to not further the work of Baptists, but to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to all people. And we're honored to have him this evening, and uh, I pray that you will pray for him as uh, he speaks. So Dr. Uh, David Strong, one of our governors, will pray, then we'll hear from the singing men, and then Dr. Elijah. They asked me to bring a prayer of gratitude, and as I was listening to Dr. Wilkes and reading through here, Dr. Bert Domney and Dr. Bob Campbell had a powerful impact on my life uh, and uh, seeing their names here reminded me of the gratitude I have for them and, and I'm praying that the gratitude you have uh, for what God has done. Join me in prayer if you would please. Almighty God and Father, we thank you that you are here. You're not a God off out there somewhere uh, without care or concern for us, but you have taken time from your busy schedule to be here among us right now. Father, you've provided support 
for our students as they have studied. You have given them strength to, to endure uh, challenges, long nights of study and, and difficult tasks, and you have carried them through on your powerful arms, and we are grateful, Father, we, for that. Father, you have given us strength as an institution as we've endured the, the couple of years, three years now of, of, of this terrible pandemic and the changes it has brought in our lives. And Father, you have borne us up with your strength and we are grateful, Father, for your strength and your encouragement at this time as well. And Father, we thank you for the hope that you've given us. Father, there is a bright, bright future for our, our institution, for our students, because of who you are, because of what you're doing. And we want to thank you for that, Father. We thank you for this one who's about to come and share your word with us tonight and pray your richest blessings on him. Father, speak through him that we may hear your word clearly tonight. For it's in the name of your blessed son we lift our prayer, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. So holy, who spun the stars into the night. He raised the mountains and carved the valleys. He reigns in righteousness and light. We sing the story. So lonely, a humble king in danger lay. He walked among us and healed the broken, our prince of peace who came to save. Our 
Well, amen. That was beautiful. What an honor and a joy to be with each and every one of you today. You are part of such a great tradition in theological education around the world. The Baptist World Alliance is aware of at least a hundred theological institutions. And so what a joy to be here for this very special time together. Congratulations to each and every one of you and to the families and friends who helped in all of these achievements. Congratulations. On behalf of the Baptist World Alliance, a family in 126 countries and territories, we join with you in celebrating the calling the Lord has placed on your life, the character that has been forged through your studies and your commitment to love Jesus Christ and his church. Our passage is Acts chapter 13 and verse number 36. Now when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. There are passages that require careful, nuanced exegesis. Fortunately, this is not one of them. <laughs> this is a much more straightforward text. David served for the purpose of God in his generation. David served for the purpose of God. More than wealth to attain, more than giants to slay, more than kingdoms to build, more than personal prestige to gain. Time and again, the testimony of Scripture is that the only lasting anchor for your soul are the purposes of God found in the Missio Dei. After all, this world will gladly offer you a purpose, the steady drum of media, social networks, literature, streaming music, casual debt, asking children, always asking children, and constant comparison will offer us a purpose. But the call is to the purpose of God. Those in your churches and your ministries will offer you their own purpose. They will meet you at the back of sanctuaries and the front of classrooms, send you emails, take you to dinner, and seek to influence you. And there are times when all of us need to hear the counsel of the prophets in our lives who urge us to course corrections. But church growth, program growth, financial growth, traditions, and legacies cannot be the only standard by which we find our purpose. For if we do, the illusion of just a little more will cause us to chase that which can never be grasped. Several years ago, I was in Somalia with an individual who'd been tortured for his faith, forced to flee as a refugee, and yet continued to live, uh, pastor two churches. He said, and I quote, We need to accept and receive the crucifixion in what Jesus passed through. We also need to pass through. They kill your flesh, but they are not able to kill your soul. Do not be afraid of those who try to kill you. Your life does not belong to you. It belongs to the Lord, and he says in his word, which always gives us hope, that I am with you to the uttermost ends of the world. Yes, we are persecuted. Yes, we do not have freedom. But we have the kingdom of God, and that is enough for us. Is the kingdom of God, graduates, enough for you? What if the purpose of God in our life is to call us to loss, to sell what we have, to serve in struggling context, to never find fame or material well-being? What if it is to call us to public humility? Is the kingdom of God enough for us? As you graduate from this excellent training, rest in the purpose of God. David served the purpose of God. Even as he became a high-impact leader, David served. 
as you recall, no one imagined that David would be a high-impact servant leader. David was from a rural area, considered the least by his own family. When David confronted Goliath, he faced real and significant challenges, just like many of you. Yet in the hands of the Lord, David was transformed into a servant leader who touched the lives of many, and so can you. There are many books on leadership, including an excellent one by your own president. There are many styles and types of leaders, but for the follower of Christ, much can be summarized in joining David in a call to serve. He did not yell, demand, or seek to criminalize, nor did he retreat or give in or become passive. David served, not always with godliness. We know he struggled with sin, as do we all. God uses those who honestly struggle, yet also seek to honestly love. As Henry Nouwen writes, We are sinful, broken, vulnerable people who need as much care as anyone we care for. The mystery of ministry is that we have been chosen to make our own limited and very conditional love the gateway for the unlimited and unconditional love of God. Recent days have reminded us of the great pain and injustice when we yield to the temptation of anything less than the purpose of God. We join in the heartbreak of Uvalde and stand with those whose dreams of moments like this have been sinfully ended. The world groans in great pain, and we are called to serve with Jesus in the suffering of humanity. We have been violently confronted again with the great harm that leads to death when we choose the free flow of weapons through our communities in the name of rights rather than in following the call of Christ to uphold a responsibility to life from conception to eternity. In Buffalo and Uvalde, we are forced to ask again, Why are people of faith so often at the forefront of christening and championing violence? Why are people of faith willing to sacrifice children on the altar of weaponry? Why do so many people of faith bless the bullets and exalt the gun? In recent released reports, we are confronted again with the great harm that can befall when we choose power and deceit in the name of protecting institutions rather than following Christ to stand with the vulnerable and those who have been harmed. In Ukraine, we are confronted again with the great harm that destroys nations bombs churches, tortures faith leaders. Yes, even just last week, decimates entire communities when we choose idols of security and safety over the call of Christ to live as peacemakers. In the last three months, I have been to Ukraine twice. I have heard the air siren ringing out in a city braced for another missile strike. I visited with refugees forced to leave everything behind. I met with church leaders navigating the reality that their names are reported to be on kill lists and yet are working to send food and help. Across that region of Ukraine and Eastern Europe, Your Baptist World Alliance family has provided 51,000 beds every night for refugees and in the last 12 weeks have helped near 1 million people. This week I was in Russia. On Monday I met with high-ranking government officials in the 
Russian President's Administration Building, I called for an immediate cessation, the establishment of humanitarian corridors, and pressed for religious freedom for all, especially as even now religious leaders are targeted, conscripted against their will, and sent to the front lines. At the end, I asked if I could pray. In the words of the government official, he said it would be the first time in their history that a Baptist had prayed in the building of Russia's president. I am not special. Like you, I graduated from a Texas Baptist school. Like some of you, I grew up in a small rural town, the son of a Baptist pastor and a stay-at-home mother. My hometown of 900 people was far from the centers of any wealth or power. But graduates, the Lord can use you. Step out in faith. Pray and work. You are called, equipped, and filled with the Holy Spirit. You are invited to serve the purposes of God across this world. You are called to be a peacemaker in the suffering of communities and in the suffering of countries. It is not for us to hold and to hoard. It is, a, it is up to us to tread lightly and in humility as we trust in Jesus. For the kingdom of God is not about us. It's not about success riches, health, or personal or institutional power. It's not about recognition, authority, or culture. The promise is the presence of Jesus. In this world of great pain with, that groans with suffering, we are called to serve. We are not called to live with closed hands. We are not called to live with open hands. We are called to live with crucified hands. David served the purposes of God in his generation. David did not seek to serve a past generation with the questions and the strengths of that generation. He did not seek to serve a future generation as if those in our immediate context are not people of dignity and value. He sought to serve the purpose of God and the constraints and the opportunities of his generation. And that is hard to do. It is easy to allow the past to be the primary shaper and framework. It is easy to daydream about the future and find solace in the statement, if only. The challenge is to recognize the constraints and opportunities of the moment, right now to live with Holy Spirit creativity as we humbly sense the still, small voice of the Lord calling to us. Now, if only I had a semester to outline this generation. But time is moving, so allow me just to highlight three very quick trends. Trend number one, changing world demographics. In 2018, for the very first time, there were more Christians in Africa than in any other continent. It may well be that the 21st century centers of Christianity will be Lagos, Kinshasa, Addis Ababa, as well as cities like Rio de Janeiro and Manila. What will it mean? This great institution, better than, than any other around the world, models so well what it means to live into this reality. I thank God for B.H. Carroll and often celebrate your work around the world and lift you up as a model. But what does it mean for ministry partnerships to listen, to learn, support, and reflect with one another when there are more Christians in Africa than any other continent? This is also true for Baptists. Over the last 10 years, the worldwide Baptist family has grown 29%. Praise the Lord! But, of course, this is different region by region. In the last 10 years, the Baptist family in Europe has declined 3% and in North America has declined 6%. But in the last 10 years, the Baptist family in Asia has grown 20%. In the Caribbean, it's grown 48%. In Latin America, it's grown 41%. In the last 10 years, the Baptist family in Africa has grown 134%. 
in the United States, we will likely face growing secularism with different questions needing different forms of ministry. We will be pressed to center ministry less in a building and more in equipping every member to live as missionaries in every home and work location. Worldwide, three billion people are still unreached with the good news of Jesus Christ. And in the next 30 years, your generation, the world population will grow by another two billion people, each made in the image of God, serving the purposes of God in this generation will ask all of us, will we live as if God has called us to reach two billion more people from your neighborhood to the nations? Trend number two, increased urbanization and technological infusion. For the first time in history, right now, the majority of people are living in cities. By 2050, this percentage will increase to 68%. So in the next 30 years, there will be 2 billion more people and 7 out of all 10 people will live in a city. Leading this trend are megacities, cities that have 10 million or more inhabitants. Today there are 33 such cities and in the next few years another 6 are projected to join that category. 20 of those 39 megacities are in Asia. 20 of those 39 megacities are in a country where less than 10% of anyone in that country claims any form of Christianity. 16 of those 39 megacities have a Baptist population of less than 25,000 in the whole of the country. To restate, almost half of the most influential cities in the world have a total Baptist population of less than 25,000 in the whole country. In this age of globalization, we are called to live with urban strategies, business trade route strategies, and inner city strategies. This increased urbanization will call us to serve with more intentional multi-ethnic leadership. Pentecost was multi-ethnic. The church that sent Paul was multi-ethnic. Paul served on a multi-ethnic team. God's worldwide mission has always called for God's worldwide church. Model graduates, intentional, multi-ethnic leadership. Alongside this, urbanization is increasing technological infusion into every aspect of life. When I first graduated, I served at a Baptist church, still debating whether or not they needed a website. <laughs> oh, the world has changed. This last week, I read of a pastor in California who was who is using emerging hologram technology to preach with live interaction and hologram projection into New Zealand. This will only increase. While the Internet of Things raises its own questions, how does technology intersect with human rights? Are there limits on health care, designer drugs, and DNA modification? How will we use these unprecedented tools to engage in ministry that was never before possible? And finally, trend number three, environmental religious freedom and human rights challenges. With religious upsurge in so many places around the world, rapidly shifting demographics, climate change, government totalitarianism, and ongoing conflict, there will remain many environmental religious freedom and human rights challenges. How will we serve when last year in Denmark, the government considered passing legislation that would force pastors to submit their sermons to the government. Or in a country in the Middle East where the Baptists had their bank accounts seized. How will we serve in Myanmar where the military launched a coup last year that bombs its own civilians. Where there were 1.7 million Baptists and the year prior to the coup were the second fastest growing Baptist body in the world where Rohingya Muslims continue to face the reality of genocide today? How will we serve in Ethiopia, where there is civil war, or war in Ukraine, or in Sri Lanka, where Baptist leaders are trying to pursue a path to peace after 50 days of protests following their country's recent financial default, a country where Baptist pastors make, on average, $50 per month? 27% of all BWA Baptists live in a context where they face significant hunger, persecution, 
war, and livelihood challenges. What does it mean to serve in this generation when one out of every four Baptists live in this reality? You can make a difference. In this generation, you can make a difference. I've seen it around the world. You are called. You are equipped. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. And God is calling you. David served the purposes of God in his generation. Graduates, and to the many who have helped prepare them and stood with them, congratulations. You've studied hard, and the hand of the Lord is with you. We need your gifts, your perspective, your passions, your ministry. God bless in you and through you as you answer the call to serve the purpose of God in this generation. Heavenly Father, I thank you for these graduates, their families, their friends, the faculty, the staff who've prepared them for this day. And we thank you most of all that you called them. So Lord, we pray that you would take their minds and think through them. That you would take their hands and serve through them. That you would take their feet and journey through them. That you would take their words and speak through them, and that you would take their heart and set it ablaze for the glory of Jesus Christ. Amen. We now come to the presentation and conferring of degrees. It's my privilege to introduce and recognize Dr. Adlin Coto, the director of our master's program in Hispanic studies, who will present the candidates for the master's degree. Mr. President, now, go. great. The Master's Programs Council and the faculty are pleased to present one student who has completed the requirements for the Graduate Certificate in Foundations for Ministry One. Victoria Evans is a campus missionary intern with Texas Baptist Baptist Student Ministry in College Station, Texas. The Master's Programs Council and the faculty are also pleased to present two who have completed all the requirements for the Master of Arts Religion, and 21 who completed all the requirements for the Master of Arts Theology, who participated in a graduation ceremony earlier this month in Vietnam. Dr. Daniel Tran, President of the Vietnam Baptist Theological Seminary and Resident Fellow, has supervised this program. Last Thursday evening on May 20th, at 9 p.m. to midnight, uh, in the U.S., uh, over 200, almost 300 graduates uh, in Vietnam gathered at 9 a.m. to noon on Friday morning at the same time in five different locations across the country. And at that time, uh, as Dr. Koto mentioned, Dr. Daniel Tran conferred the degrees that we as a school have been walking alongside of these students uh, for their master's program. This program, like many others, cannot be done with just the school itself. Uh, on that call were those who have helped provide the facilities as well as the curriculum and the teachers, one of those being Vietnam Baptist Theological Seminary, uh, Dr. Daniel Tran, uh, Bill Holmes, an oil man in Midland, Texas, has uh, provided for us through Vietnamese Baptist Inc., uh, Bible Inc., which, by the way, has been translating, publishing, and di distributing at the favor of the Vietnam government these Bibles in country since the mid-'80s. And he has been in partnership with us. And then 
Dr. Darren Wood, the pastor of First Baptist Church Midland, Texas, who has funded this program uh, in mighty ways, was also on that call. And we all participated in the granting of these degrees. So uh, thank you for your prayers and know that uh, these students uh, were honored and uh, represent B.H. Carroll in the country of Vietnam from Hanoi to Saigon. Mr. President, the Master's Program, Program Council and the faculty are pleased to present one who has completed all the requirements for the degree Master of Arts Religion, 10 who have completed all the requirements for the degree of Master of Arts in Counseling, two who have completed all the requirements for the degree Master of Arts Theology, and three who have completed all the requirements for the degree Master of Divinity. By the authority of the Board of Governors and on the recommendation of the faculty, and having completed the courses of study prescribed, I hereby confer upon you the respective master's degrees with all the honors, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto wherever you may serve. Jacqueline Shea Parrish. Jacqueline Shea Parrish is a resident of Fort Worth, Texas, and a member of University Baptist Church, where she serves with the Discipleship Group Ministry and Mission Sending Committee. Jacqueline would like to thank her husband, Samuel, who has worked hard to provide her the margin needed to complete her studies, and has consistently reassured her that this work has meaning, value, and purpose. What encouraged her more during her time at Carroll was hearing consistently from professors that she does good scholarly work and that she has what it takes to pursue advanced studies. Luke Anthony Boyd is graduating in absentia. Luke Anthony Boyd is a resident of Austin, Texas, where he's a member and works as a counselor at Hill Country Bible Church. Luke plans to continue working in this capacity after graduating and later moving into private practice. What encouraged him most during this time was having Christ-centered community in and outside of school, adding that he's grateful for the people who prayed for him and labored alongside him while he completed his degree. He wants to thank his wife Chandler, his parents Margie and Tony, and his brother Jake. Lauren Kutsia. Lauren Kutsia is a resident of the Woodlands, Texas, where she serves in the children's ministry at Declaration Church. Lauren has been in South Africa exploring future mission opportunities and hopes to use her training and skills to serve as a counselor to those who are hurting as well as equipping and training others who serve the local church with skills to share the love of Christ. Lauren would like to thank her parents who supported her with encouragement and wisdom. Her mentor, Pastor Bobby Maynard, and friends, Anna, Cara, Jennifer, Tamatha, Soner, and Martin. Lauren would also like to thank her professors for encouraging her most as she worked full-time in ministry while pursuing her degree. She is grateful for the extra support and grace during COVID times when things were challenging. Story Wilkes Cook. Story is a resident of Waco, Texas, where she is a member of Cavalry Baptist Church. She plans to continue serving all ages and stages of development as private practice in counseling. She would like to thank her husband, Graham, who not only exhibited tremendous patience throughout this process, but cheered her on and encouraged her every step of the way her children Campbell and Grayer for being supportive and understanding of her schoolwork and her dad for giving her his love of learning and introducing her to B.H. Carroll. Story thanks both her mom and dad for their support and encouragement. Thanks Ron and Sarah Cook for helping with the cooklets during her practicum. What encouraged her most during the time in Carroll is the professors and students. It was a gift to learn in such a personable, personable and excellent environment, and she is grateful to have the Carol Network with her as she enters her career. Katie Haraway. 
Katie Hathaway is a resident of Canadian, Texas, where she is a member of First Baptist Church Canadian and director of Love Center Mission, an organization that provides free food and clothing and the love of Jesus to the community. Katie plans to complete the internship required to become a licensed professional counselor and then see what journey God has planned for her next. She would like to thank her friends and family, especially her kids, for standing by her while she completed her degree. What encouraged her most during her time at Carroll was that she loved all her professors and appreciates their genuine love and support for all the students. Micah Daniel Howell. Micah is a resident of Netherland, Texas, where he serves as children's pastor at Carpenter's Way Fellowship in Groves, Texas. Micah and his wife, Lori, plan to move into counseling ministry after graduation and hope to open a counseling center in Southeast Texas. He would like to thank his parents, Dr. Lani and Brenda Howell, always supported him in his ministry journey. Micah left seminary 15 years ago when his mom was dying, but made a promise to finish his degree. And he thanks his daddy for the loving gift he received when passing that allowed him and Lori to go back to school. He wished they could be here today to thank them for their loving, for loving him and Lori so much. Micah also thanks his own and uncle, his in-laws, as well as numerous families and friends who helped them along the way. He enjoyed getting to know Dr. Floyd and Dr. Wolf so well, and he's grateful for um, that B.H. Carroll loved on his family during hard times, prayed for them, making the school a family in many ways. Lori Leanne Howell. Lori Leanne is a resident of Netherland, Texas, and a member at Carpenter's Fellowship in Groves, Texas, where she leads with the Kids Club Ministry. She plans to work with the local counseling center towards her goal of becoming a licensed professional counselor. She thanks her, her husband, Micah, for not letting her give up on days when it was so difficult to persevere, and for his love and support throughout the journey. Their two girls, Brenly Kate and Callie Ray, for all the sacrifices they have made. Her parents, Dennis and Aline Whitmire, who were always supportive and watched the girls during nights of classes. Her in-laws, Brenda and Lani Howell, whose legacy and endowment has given them the opportunity to complete their ministry endeavors. Lori would also like to thank Family Services of South Southeast Texas, where she completed her practicum their village of family and friends who were there to encourage and ensure their children's needs were met. Lori's time at Carroll was life-changing, and she has grown spiritually and academically. She's grateful for professors who gave support for their willingness to help them work through obstacles along the way. Andrew Infinger. Andrew is a resident of Fort Worth, where he is a member and serves at Redemption Story Church. After graduation, he plans to pursue full-time counseling and said he specifically enjoys working with children and young adults. He would like to thank his wife, Nicole, grandparents, Sharon and Bob, and sister-in-law, Amanda, for their support during the seminary journey. Andrew said the professors were the highlight of his experience, and he appreciated that they were so knowledgeable and personable. Michelle. Lee Lowen. Michelle is a resident of Weatherford, Texas, and a member of Northside Baptist Church, where she serves in the choir and as a Christian counselor. Her goals after graduation include full LPC licensure, becoming EMDR certified, and retire from TRS to have more time to focus on counseling as a ministry. Michelle also plans to part to be part of the crisis response team in Parker County called REACT. She plans to travel and spend time with her children and grandbabies. She would like to thank her husband, Drew Lowen, children and parents for their support. What encouraged her the most while attending Carroll was the genuine interest and support of her professors. 
there is a common theme here. Specifically, it was their guidance, understanding, and prayer that had the most impact on her success at B.H. Carroll. Caitlin Paniagua. Caitlin currently lives in Commerce, Texas, where she serves at First Baptist Church of Commerce, where she helps lead Sunday school for kinder kindergarten to fifth grade. She will continue to work at the Mental Health Clinic of Greenville and will transition to being a full-time staff counselor. She would like to thank her immediate family members, but especially her husband, Kevin, and her parents, Tom and Melissa Norcross. What encouraged her most about her time at Carroll was interacting with so many believers who also have a passion for mental health. It was a blessing to learn from professionals in the field who are actively integrating their faith and psychology, and that she's grateful of how Carol taught her well and prepared her for a career in counseling. The program has changed her life in more ways than she can describe, and she will never be the same. Trish Watson is graduating in absentia. She is a resident of Alido, Texas, where she serves at Trinity Bible Church. After graduation, she plans to continue as God leads. Lori Myers Berry. Lori is a resident of South Lake, Texas, who attends White Chapel UMC and is a volunteer small group leader at Irving Bible Church. Lori plans to continue to grow in her calling to encourage, equip, and support sisters in Christ as they follow God's directions in their lives. Her ministry work will include research, writing, consulting, and creating opportunities for women to thrive in their spiritual formation and leadership development. She is thankful for the support and patience of her husband, Clive, children, Arden and Colin, and her cousin, Jennifer Jacobs, as well as her parents and grandmothers. She is grateful for the friendship and mentorship of her thesis supervisor, Dr. Marsha Ellie Smith. Lori also wants to thank Dr. Floyd, Dr. Wilkes, Dr. Coro, for their support as she began as a counseling student at Carroll and when led by the Holy Spirit, changed to the uh, Master of Arts Theology degree and now graduation. Erin Cargill Newton. Erin is a resident of Denton, Texas, where she serves the village Denton in preschool ministry and financial ministry. Erin is also the coordinator of the Carroll Prayer Network for B.H. Carroll and a contributing writer for the Park Forum. She has been admitted to the Carroll's PhD program in Old Testament. She offers a special thank to her husband Cameron and kids Evelyn, Otto, Jack, and Charlie. Without their support, she would have given up a long time ago. What encouraged her most about her time at Carroll was the passion each professor had while teaching their course and the openness for conversations, debates, and questions, adding that it always felt like a safe place to exchange ideas, refine theological understanding, and graciously accept perspectives that differed from our own. She is thankful for the opportunity to think deeply. Gillian Nicole Brown, Gillian is a resident of Canton, Texas, where she is writing Bible study curriculum for the Tom's ministry at First Baptist Church, Louisville. She started a devotional blog called Illuminate. After graduation, she plans to pursue teaching theology. She would like to thank her husband, Matt, her two sons, Ethan and Evan, and all the family and church family who has supported her in this endeavor. She was encouraged as a female in the MDiv program and always was treated like an equal and up to the task of doing serious theological work. She greatly appreciates the opportunity and responsibility and hopes to teach others they are capable of doing work of theology as well, whether in seminary or in their local church communities. James Stanley Moore Jr. is graduating in absentia he is a resident of Cincinnati, where he is elder and lead pastor of Marymount Church. He plans to continue in this role and would like to thank 
his family, his wife Jess, Kids Bailey and Caden, and parents, Stan and Mary. Amen. What encouraged him about this time was the depth of academic rigor and the practical ministry application was so encouraging. A. Marvin Winham Jr., he is graduating in absentia. Marvin is a resident of Ruston, Louisiana, and he serves as a pastor of New Prospect Baptist Church in Dubac, Louisiana. He plans to continue in this role after graduating and wants to thank his spouse, Kayla, and sons, Philip and Stephen, for their support. He enjoyed the interaction with students and professors throughout his course assignments, and he was amazed at the ability of the professors to clearly discuss and get to the point or heart of the matter in such a few words. The B.S. Carroll format was a great fit for him personally, particularly while he was still in a demanding full-time career. Marvin said that Carol has prepared him well for his current service of ministry, for God's kingdom, and for that, he is thankful. Amen. I congratulate you on what these degrees represent and pray that God will use you where he has planted you. Let's congratulate these. This is where I would normally recognize Dr. Karen Bullock, a distinguished uh, professor of uh, church history and uh, the director of our doctoral program council and our PhD program, but as you know, her, she is home with her family where she would be. And in her stead today, I recognize Dr. Stan Moore, senior fellow of the uh, Worship and Mission Cluster, and uh, also our registrar. Again, uh, these uh, first floor, four that started our school wore many, many hats. And uh, we thank you, Stan, uh, for stepping in as you always are willing to do at this time. Mr. President, the Doctoral Programs Council and faculty are pleased to present five who have completed all requirements leading to the degree Doctor of Philosophy. By the authority of the Board of Governors and on the recommendation of the faculty, having completed the course of study prescribed, I do now confer upon you the degree Doctor of Philosophy with all the honors, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto wherever you may serve. And we'll ask all of the B.H. Carroll faculty to please rise in honor of our new Ph.D. graduates. Nicholas Heath Acker. <laughs> Dr. Acker's dissertation title was How Should the Reader Run? Implications of Orality and Textuality in the Transmission and Message of the Habakkuk Tradition as seen in important witnesses to the text. His supervisor who is assisting with the robing is Dr. Rick Johnson. Dr. Acker lives in Ventura, California, where he serves as pastor of Grace Church. Congratulations, Dr. Acker. Ryan James Dennison. <laughs> Dr. Dennison's dissertation title is Let the Sages Speak, an analysis of approaches taken by selected Gnostics, Christian Fathers, and Eckhart Tolle on Jesus and salvation. Dr. Karen Bullock, would normally be here to help hood him as she served as his supervisor. We're grateful to
to Paul Greitz, of course, who I served with for many, many years, who is a professor of church history who is helping with this hooding tonight. Dr. Dennison lives in Tyler, Texas, and is the senior editor for theology, research, and writer at the Denison Forum. Justice Freeman. Dr. Freeman's dissertation title is Matthew's Use of Jeremianic Perspective in John the Baptist's Message, an Indictment of the Jewish Religious Leadership. His supervisor, Dr. Robert Williams could not be here. We're grateful to Dr. Rick Johnson, who has assisted with his hooding. Dr. Freeman lives in New Orleans, Louisiana. He is lead pastor of All Nations Fellowship and vice president for academic affairs at Bridges Christian College in New Orleans, Louisiana. Mr. President, we have two PhD graduates who are graduating in absentia because of geopolitical problems in our world and the pandemic, they were unable to travel and be with us for this occasion, but they are viewing online. So say hello to them, wave at them, say something. We've asked some surrogates to stand in their place to receive their diplomas. Vereslav Garasimchuk. I'm going to call him Slava, if that's all right with you. That's how he goes by. His dissertation title is Between Availability and Freedom, Freedom, Yahweh and the Ark of the Covenant as a Symbol and Locus of Yahweh's Presence par excellence in the Old Testament. His supervisor, Dr. Rick Johnson, is here to receive his diploma. Dr. Jera Simchuk lives in Odessa, Ukraine and serves as professor of Old Testament at the Odessa Theological Seminary. Congratulations, Dr. Jera Simchuk. Dario Esquerdo Hernandez. Dr. Hernandez's dissertation title is Teaching the Bible, Use and Authority of Scripture and Curriculum Development in Evangelical Seminaries in Cuba. And I'll give it a Portuguese accent <laughs> in, Eng in, in Spanish. It was written in Spanish. Enseñar la Biblia, Uso y Autoridad de las Escrituras y del Desarrollo de Curriculos en Seminarios Evangélicos en Cuba. Cuba. <laughs> That's a Portuguese way of saying it. <laughs> yeah. His supervisors were Dr. Bruce Corley and Dr. Adlin Cotto. And we're very pleased tonight that a close friend of his, Dr. L.M. Dyson, retired professor of finance, insurance, and real estate from Baylor University, who has ministered for many years in Cuba and who is his friend and encourager is receiving his diploma on his behalf. He is here to receive this diploma tonight and we're glad that he is. Dr. Hernandez lives in Santa Clara, Villa Clara, Cuba and serves as professor of New Testament at the Santa Clara Baptist Theological Seminary. Thank you, Dr. Dyson.
I congratulate our graduates on the achievement which your doctoral degree represents and know that the Lord will use you mightily where he has placed you here and around the world. Let us thank and congratulate. These We will have a song of uh, together, and then uh, Reverend Anthony Freeman, uh, Dr. Freeman's father, will lead us in prayer, and then we'll be dismissed. As we conclude our worship service tonight, it is certainly appropriate for us to emphasize the great hope that we have in Christ Jesus. Thank you for reminding us, Dr. Brown, of the needs of our world. But there is hope in Christ Jesus. He is our living hope. The choir would like to sing, but would like for you to join us. So please stand as we sing together, Living Hope. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows.
Please remain standing. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. You are a living hope, Lord God. We thank you for so great a salvation, Lord God. We thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you for an empty tomb, Lord God, and for resurrection power that dwells in each and every one of us, Lord God. Lord, we thank you today, Father, for this tremendous ceremony, Lord God, and for those that are going forth into the world with hearts ablaze for Jesus Christ. Lord, may they go into this world and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, that lives will be changed, hearts will be changed, Lord God, that uh, chains will be broken over lives, Lord God, people will be, will be set free, Lord God. We give you thanks, Lord. And God, I thank you for this great institution, Lord God, that has dedicated itself, Lord, to training uh, men and women for the harvest, Lord God. And Father, we just dedicate, uh, Lord, this, the rest of this evening, Lord God, and we dedicate ourselves for your kingdom, God. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And we give you thanks, Lord, and praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen.